welcome everybody to this uh, panel. Uh, this is the uh, second panel discussion of the uh, international conference. Probably this is the last one for the conference. Uh, the title for this panel discussion is called uh, Quality Assurance. Quality Assurance and Quality Enhancement of WEPAC. Uh, as the name of this uh, panel discussion uh, suggests, there's two key words in this um, title. Uh, one is very obvious, quality, whether it's quality assurance or quality enhancement. And the other key words for this panel discussion is VPAC, which stands for Vocational and Professional Education and Training. And this, is, uh, this title is uh, familiar to everybody in Hong Kong. Um, now, um, the reason we choose this title because it is very crucial to ensure all the WEPAC, whether it's program or training activities, provided to our student and employee, they must be of good quality. Now, I have a panel of uh, distinguished speakers here, uh, a total of six of them. I have five of them are on my side, and, and the other one is uh, far away from Hong Kong in Malta. Um, I don't think I need to introduce them one by one since the MC has already introduced them. So they, uh, this panelist, they will make a presentation of uh, how they look at the issue of quality of WEPAC and share the experience um, in enhancing the quality of WEPAC training in Hong Kong. Uh, without further ado, uh, let me first invite the first speaker, uh, Mr. Steve Lai. He's the general manager of the uh, QF, Hong Kong QF Secretariat. Uh, Steve, please. Thank you, Anthony. It's just given in your introduction. The topic for this section is quality assurance and quality enhancement in vocational and professional education training, what we call VEPAC in Hong Kong. So we are going to talk about quality VEPAC. And my sharing today will be very straightforward. First, I shall mention from the government a more macro perspective what the primary purpose of VEPAC is. And then I shall try to identify a few critical factors or conditions required for quality VEPAC. And finally, I will introduce to you some concrete deliverables that QF Hong Kong Qualifications Framework can provide to facilitate the development of quality VPAC in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, as we all know, we don't have rich natural resources. What we can count on is our people, human capital. So with this belief, the Hong Kong government has taken VPAC as one of our top priorities in the, in the area of education. And from the Education Bureau or our Qualifications Framework Secretariat's perspective, the primary purpose of VPAC or what we are striving for uh, is to produce, to nurture a competent and resilient workforce so that we can still stay competitive in response to the changing market needs. And this will in turn support and facilitate our economic development. Another major objective of VPAC is to provide both the in-service practitioners and youth with learning and career progression pathways. We believe with such a hierarchy of upward opportunities in place, our in-service practitioners will have more incentive to pursue further studies for career advancement. This will also help attract potential new bloods to the trade concerned. So what our QF can do in support of a quality VPAC, like many other countries, our Hong Kong Qualifications Framework is an overarching qualification system for lifelong learning. It's a unitary framework which in fact covers all the education and training factors, uh, uh, sectors. So no matter the qualifications are from the VPAC, academic or continual education sector, they are all covered under our QF system. In fact, our QF provides a transparent and well-established structure for articulation of qualifications acquired from different education and training sectors. 
Our QF has also put much emphasis on industry participation, and this could effectively enable a better, if not a seamless, interface between education and employment. And I will elaborate more on this area later on. And from the QA perspective, our QF is supported by legislation with a robust quality assurance mechanism. All QF recognized qualifications have gone through a robust and stringent accreditation process, so they are all quality assured and credible. Here, I try to identify three critical factors or conditions required for quality repact. Apparently, Appar uh, relevance to the needs of industries or profession is important. So we have to know what the essential skills for the industries are and make sure that the contents of any VPAC programs or qualifications can meet the specific competency requirements of the trade or profession concerned. Similarly, industry recognition is, so, is also a key to the success of any VPAC qualifications or program. So if our VPAC is to be popular, the relevant industries or stakeholders have to be engaged in the whole development process. By doing so, we are well aware of what they need and can provide kind of education and training they require. And lastly, of course, quality assurance will always form the backbone for VPAC. It's critical because it helps ascertain if the VPAC programs or qualifications have met the industry standard as well as the QF standard in one go. Here comes to introduce to you some concrete deliverables that QF can contribute to the development of quality VPAC. As I mentioned in my last slide, industry relevance and recognition is the key to the success of any VPAC qualifications. Under QF, we have a very strong industry network. Now we have already set up a total of 22 industry training advisory committees, um, what we call ITACs, which cover over half of the total workforce in Hong Kong. They comprise mainly those uh, major stakeholders, including representatives of employers, employees, professional bodies, and relevant, uh, providers, relevant uh, government bureaus and departments. These industry committees, in fact, provide a very effective platform for exchange of ideas and information on the training needs and manpower development for different trades or professions. This diagram clearly shows our 22 industry committees set up under QF. You may appreciate such a wide industry participation as indicated in um, quite a great variety of trades and industry involved. We have some sorts of skill-based industries like beauty, hairdressing, catering, and some uh, service industry like uh, retail and property management, and also certain trades or industry that require petitioners to have more qualifications or even certifications such as the banking industry. I'm sure bank, uh, Kerry will tell us more about the banking industry later. And so such strong industry network is very conducive to the development of quality VPAC in Hong Kong. Um, the industry committees or ITECs mentioned above are much more than a platform for exchange of information. One of their major functions is to draw up the competency standards for the industry concerned. This is what we call this uh, specification of competency standards, SES under QF. Actually, our SES set out the skills and knowledge required of practitioners to perform different job functions in the related trade. And these industry-specific competency standards, in, in fact, form the basis for VPAC. Given the SES has very high industry relevance and recognition, so Providers and institutions are very keen to make use of the SES to develop their VPAC programs, what we call SS-based program, to cater for the specific need of different industries. With the SES, the competence standards developed by industries, we try to go one step further, that is the development of vocational qualifications pathway, what we call VQP, in fact, it's our direction for implementation of QF in industries. We are going to help 
different industries to develop occupation-based qualifications with the SES for certain principal job posts. By doing so, we want to provide a roadmap of progression in both learning and employment. That means education and employment will become more closely linked. We hope that we facilitate a seamless interface between the education and the labor market. Yes. Uh, another QF deliverable is about the development of professional qualifications. In the past, the great majority of QF recognized qualifications are attached with learning programs. But as you are aware, there are more and more of other forms of occupation-based qualifications like trade test, a license, or various formats of professional qualifications. They are acquired largely through professional as assessment. Uh, not, yet not necessarily underpinned by learning programs. So two years ago, the Education Bureau launched an initiative to include such professional qualifications under QF. We believe uh, this will expand the coverage of our QF, of course, and also raise the professional image of VPAC. The purpose of this move is also to facilitate eligible professional bodies or organizations to become assessment agency for granting such occupation-based professional qualifications under Hong Kong QF. So uh, if we want to provide a favorable environment for quality VPAC, industry relevance and recognition are, sufficient, are, are, are crucial, but not sufficient. We still need an impartial organization or mechanism to ascertain if the VPAC programs or, or qualifications meet the required standards or level. So QA is always the backbone. As I mentioned earlier, our QF is underpinned by legislation with a very robust QA mechanism, which can, which can assure the quality of qualifications. Of course, if the program in question is SS-based, the QA mechanism can also determine if it meets the competency requirements of the specific trade concerned. So that's what I want to share with you today. So any comments, uh, suggestions, and advice are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Um, as everybody knows, QF is uh, one of the major education initiatives introduced by the uh, Hong Kong government in 2008. Uh, and the focus of this framework is on supporting the VPAC developments. Uh, thanks, uh, Steve, for explaining how these uh, QF infrastructures can contribute to help us achieve the various objectives of WEPAC. Now, before I leaving this topic, I would like to have a question uh, for Steve. Now, you mentioned in one of your slides that uh, QF is a platform for exchange and interactions among the stakeholders. What exactly do you think the major stakeholders, like the um, policy makers, industry, professional bodies, employers, what do you think they should do to make WePAC more successful in Hong Kong? Uh, thank you, Anthony. Um, this is a very uh, valid question. As I mentioned in my presentation, um, for the development of quality VPAC, we need to engage different stakeholders like the employers, employees, professional bodies, providers, and the government departments. And in fact, they are playing different roles and functions throughout the whole process. In my opinion, employer is always the driver they are the end user of any VPAC qualifications. So um, if the employers consider a particular VPAC program relevant to their need, and they recognize those people with such VPAC qualifications for say HR functions like um, recruitment or even promotion, that will uh, generate or create kind of market signals and other stakeholders will follow suit. Say the practitioners and learners will take that program if they want to get a job, and providers will have more incentive to, to, uh, to design and develop that kind of VPAC program to meet the market needs. And finally, um, the role of government, say um, maybe the role of QF is to provide, as I said before, an overarching 
qualification system with a credible quality assurance mechanism so that everything can be put together um, in a, say, effective and complementary manner. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Steve. So the, can we move on to the uh, second speakers? Uh, Dr. Albert Chuck. Um, Dr. Albert Chuck is the director of uh, quality assurance as well as the, uh, an expert on teaching and learning in Vocational Training Council. He's one of the major training providers in Hong Kong. Um, yes, uh, Dr. Chuck, please. Thank you, Anthony. Well, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, the quality assurance and the quality enhancement of uh, vo v vocational, professional education and training in VTC. Well, uh, for those uh, who come from overseas, uh, first of all, let me uh, briefly introduce to you what VTC is all about. VTC stands for the Vocational Training Council in Hong Kong. Actually, it's the major VPAC provider uh, contributing the majority of VPAC program in Hong Kong. It was established 38 years ago in 1982, and it has uh, 13 member institutions delivering programs covering engineering, applied science, design, IT, business administration, and childcare, etc. Each year, the institution trained uh, 200,000 students uh, who will go into the industry to contribute as well as establish and help the Hong Kong economy and the living of the whole uh, community. So the institution based on the, a vocational as well as the outcome-based approach to going about the training programs. In the past, the institution has been focusing on quality control as, uh, as well as quality assurance. Today and in the future, we are uh, transforming to quality enhancement. In WePAC, uh, we appreciate that uh, there are three major stakeholders uh, which are important uh, people that uh, we must focus as well as uh, pay uh, particular attention to. First is the students, the second industry, and the third is the WePAC provider, in our case, uh, the VTC. So, in our case, in the whole institution, everyone is involved. Everyone has a, a role to play in the WePAC. So, in the institution, is responsible for identifying and addressing industry needs as well as responding to the manpower demand of the whole community. Then the member institution will continually improve program curriculum and enhance the quality of the, those programs. Individual teachers, they are responsible for delivering authentic, professional, as well as vocational concepts and skills to the students to make them work ready as well as industry ready. In VTC, we have embraced a quality culture. The first and foremost is the student-centered. The VTC and teachers focus on students' interests. This is the, the most important piece. Then to germinate, consolidate, as well as to internalize students' professional ethics and values. We need to impart the students with the ethics so that they become a whole person they uh, contribute as well as to respect the social values of their whole community. Then the, stu the institution will impart students with up-to-date professional and vocational concepts and skills. Also, they will equip students with the problem-solving skills to tackle real-life problems in the industry. And last but not the least is the up-to-date pedagogies we uh, adopt the learn and uh, assess the students in authentic environment in industry. I repeat, basically, we want the students to be work ready as well as to industry ready. In VTC, we have, uh, like uh, you are seeing, uh, developed a quality enhancement gold standards module. Uh, this is a very beautiful flower. Uh, let me take a, a couple of minutes to introduce to you what the, the model is all about. 
The basic concept at the center of the flower is the student center, which is our core value. Underpinning this uh, student center, we have three core values. The first one is transparency and fairness. The second is the evidence base. The third is the check and balance. What do, we, uh, what do they mean? If that means we need to give these uh, students a fair and transparent study learning in their journey in VTC. And then whatever we do need to base on evidence so that what we do is really meeting the needs of everyone in the VPAC. And finally, we need to have a check and balance. There's no point uh, individual teachers or program leaders designing programs or delivering the, the concepts on their own without realizing whether those are really up to date as far as the most appropriate the concept and skills to be given to the students. So um, I, then I, I'll uh, take a couple of minutes to introduce uh, the eight petals, i.e. those eight areas of importance uh, in the whole uh, QE concept in VTC. Uh, starting from the uh, 11 o'clock uh, position is the external wheels, industry and market needs. Basically, we need to uh, go out and uh, canvas wheels from the industry, from the uh, community to see what their needs are and then to how we should design the program. And apparently once we have the external wheels, then we can design the program and structure the curriculum as well as include the content according to the needs of the industry and the market so that the student do learn about the best bit to meet the industry needs. Then uh, going to the, the third areas, the recognition and the accreditation at the uh, two crop position. Basically, that is, as I said, uh, there's no point for us to tell everybody that our programs are the best without any objective assessment. So we uh, must ensure our program are objectively assessed uh, as well as accredited by external parties who are um, authorities. Uh, in our case, we put our program to, uh, for accreditation uh, by the statutory body uh, like the Hong Kong CAVQ and then the Hong Kong Institution of Engineers. So these are the, the accreditation we obtain uh, every day so that uh, the program are objectively assessed. Then we come to the uh, four crop position, the student admission, as well as the uh, five crop position, the availability of uh, information to students and public. You will re remember that um, I talk about the transparency and fairness. So these two areas are those uh, passes that uh, we need to ensure our students are given the most reliable, accurate and accessible information about our program so that they can make informed choice to plan the learning journey and go through the process as well as obtaining the necessary qualification as well as the skills, the concepts and uh, the problem skills to make their uh, work life in the future most comfortable and easy. Now, let me move on to the um, seven o'clock position, the student support and enabling resources. Apparently, when we admit the student into our program, we need to give them the resources as well as the support so that, that they can have a enjoyable and memorable learning journey throughout the two years, three years, or four years in VDC. Then uh, uh, have, we have talked about uh, what we support the student. At the same time, we need to look after these teachers who are the important uh, people in the whole VPAC. So we need to uh, engage the teachers so that uh, they have a fair and uh, comfortable uh, uh, workload and uh, they won't be overburdened by administration uh, so that uh, they spend their time uh, more on administration rather than uh, teaching or the facilitating the learning of the students. Uh, likewise, uh, we need to give the uh, teachers the qualification as well as the opportunity to update and upskill themselves, obtaining the necessary uh, qualification. 
So basically, this is to uh, ensure the teachers will give the best concepts and the up-to-date skills to the students. Again, back to the same uh, uh, old uh, objective is to let the students be work ready and industry ready. So um, uh, on this model, some uh, people may say, well, we have been doing uh, 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 quite a bit of this. But I'm, I must say that uh, the model itself is a comprehensive um, uh, picture of the, what we should do. And apparently, uh, many people would focus on one or two, or at most three. Then, uh, but uh, at a glance of this model, they know how best each and every party can contribute to the quality of our program. Now, let me uh, uh, talk about uh, two updated pedagogies of uh, our WDC. Basically, the first one is the workplace learning and assessment, WLA in brief. Well, basically, we send the student to the authentic uh, workplace to learn and be assessed there. And uh, here, we, we ensure the quality by uh, inviting the employers who are uh, uh, so generously uh, provide the learning opportunities to the students. We invite the employers to uh, nominate trainers, verifiers, and assessors, and then so we train them and accredit them so that, that they can provide the training as well as the assessment on the students. At the same time, these teachers will provide monitoring and student support so that uh, the, the student will, will not be left alone in the workplace without any support or help. Last but not the least is the project-based learning, uh, which our executive director has mentioned early on. This is a, 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 a pedagogy in which students are grouped into teams and uh, work on projects. Those projects, they will find solutions to real-life problems in the industry. Those problems are uh, provided by the industry practitioners so that, that they, they can uh, have uh, some kind of solutions. Students under this pedagogy will group together, uh, uh, facilitate by the teachers to do self-directed learning and find the solutions to the real life uh, problem. And uh, once they have these solutions, they can present to the industry practitioners and help out. Earlier on, our executive director has already mentioned about uh, a, uh, a project uh, which uh, a drone was uh, designed by the uh, Institute of uh, Vocational Education to students to help the rescue services in Hong Kong to undergo uh, rescue services. So, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, concludes my presentation and thank you. Thanks, Albert. Uh, Albert has just presented the uh, WePAC model in a very detailed explanation on VPAC models in, uh, in VTC. Um, I'm very interested to note that the, the underpinning uh, concept for this uh, model is, uh, you mentioned student center, and is moving from quality control to quality assurance and then to quality enhancement. I think this is the, we are all moving in the right directions. Now, before uh, we move on to another uh, speakers, uh, I'm in interested to know more about the two updated pedagogy you mentioned. You mentioned about this uh, workplace learning assessment. Uh, the other one is project-based learning. Uh, how are these two new pedagogies different from those traditional WePAC training that we are talking about? You know, uh, for traditional one, we all uh, emphasize uh, studying in the classroom as well as doing the practical sessions in a, uh, in, in a uh, real life situations. So how is these two uh, new pedagogies different from the traditional one? Well, thank you, Anthony. Well, basically those uh, new pedagogies uh, focus on one point is the learning by doing. Learning by doing um, is very important uh, so that the students can really appreciate what uh, are needed for, from them in the real workplace. 
as uh, point number one. Point number two is basically in the past, uh, students, they, they learned the concept at school or at the uh, WTC campus, and then go out to the workplace and practice. In terms of time, it would be quite cumbersome. And it, uh, uh, for instance, uh, it, it takes a longer time for them to, to do the blend more, what I would say. But in terms of uh, workplace learning assessment, they learn as well as the test themselves in the workplace. So in you can see that the time is condensed, that the, the duration is shortened. So it's, it, it's more efficient uh, as far as the students' learning is concerned. And uh, again, the, because they learn at the workplace, they really can appreciate what they are expected uh, from the, for instance, the employers or the uh, colleagues in the workplace. And from the student's perspective, it would be more effective. And uh, most importantly is uh, when they are in the uh, workplace, they really know how to deal with people. That's very important because in today's world, uh, dealing with people is the, uh, I would say, the, the, the biggest issues. Because uh, day in and day out, if you can't, the, the, uh, uh, communicate or um, managing the people's relations, uh, then uh, is bound to be failed. So um, again, uh, on the project-based learning, is the um, you 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 would see that is a refinement of the uh, pedagogies that we have been using. For instance, the final year project. In the project-based learning, we uh, have a, fr a rather flexible approach. It can be an integration of uh, uh, many modules within a semester, so that uh, it becomes a cross-disciplinary learning uh, throughout the semester. Or it can be a uh, standalone module on the project. Or it can take the form of the uh, previous uh, year-end project. So through the uh, project-based learning concept, the sole purpose is to let the students come together in small groups, appreciate a situation, identify the problem, define the problem, and find the solutions themselves. And uh, as I am told by uh, students as well as teachers, they really like the concept because they can actually appreciate the situation themselves. They learn themselves. At the same time, the teachers do, do tell me that uh, they, they, they like it because they, they learn together with the students. And uh, another uh, point is some of the students told me that um, those uh, students who were signed, uh, were, who, were un, uh, who dare not come forward to uh, participate in the classroom learning, in the project-based learning, they come forward. They became the leader, and as well as that, they become uh, most active because in those uh, environments, they, they can find their, their self-ego. They can uh, uh, excel themselves in a small group and become uh, more eff effective in terms of learning. Okay, thank you, Anthony. Oh, okay, thank you, Albert. I hope uh, later on you can come back and tell us how successful is the new uh, pedagogies. Now, we move on to our first speaker. Uh, Professor Richard Yoon is coming from uh, the City University. He's the chief of staff. Um, he will explain to us the, how WePAC training uh, is doing in, uh, in, in the university sectors. Uh, Professor Yoon, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Chairman, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow panelists. Uh, today, I'm very uh, happy to share some of my uh, experiences uh, uh, from the university uh, perspective. Uh, I actually, uh, I am new to this uh, chief of staff position. I have been in the uh, education sector ever since 1982, uh, starting as a teacher, then move on to uh, professorial, uh, uh, Korea. Uh, so I am very happy that uh, we can have a chance to share some of the views uh, from the perspective of a university, how we contribute to uh, WPEG, uh, WPET. Uh, and uh, I cannot uh, put everything together. I only select 
three areas where I think would be useful to share in this uh, presentation. Uh, firstly, is the attributes contributing to the good quality of repack. Secondly, uh, identifying some uh, key essential stakeholders. And finally, how these stakeholders can contribute towards the uh, quality uh, VPET uh, schemes. Um, firstly, I uh, have to borrow some of the uh, very established uh, attributes in engineering education, uh, which is now, I think, very widely uh, adopted in Hong Kong, uh, and I think is uh, internationally uh, more or less uh, well received. Firstly, uh, to train an engineer, a professional uh, engineer, we uh, map it uh, to uh, the QF level five, uh, which is uh, also uh, uh, briefly uh, discussed by our other panelists, the first speaker. Uh, the, there are 12 points. By no means they are exhaustive. We can have more points, but those points are very uh, important and in the engineering professional training community, I think this is well accepted. So let me uh, just briefly go through them. Uh, they are all abilities relating to applying fundamental knowledge of mathematics, science, and formulae solutions for engineering problems. And secondly, to design, conduct, and uh, exper uh, conduct experiments uh, so as to uh, to the, the words are very small, sorry. <laughs> yep, so, so as to, uh, to uh, provide appreciation of other engineering uh, designs, as well as uh, analyzing and interpret data for in engineering design and uh, professional disciplines, depending on which discipline they are, they call for slightly different skills. And then thirdly, is the ability to plan, organize, and construct, control, monitor and deliver engineering projects of all types to meet the desired needs within the constraints, practical constraints in terms of economy, quality, safety, environment and sustainability, etc. And then very importantly, as a professional engineer, uh, we need to be able to work with multidisciplinary teams. It could be uh, architects, uh, surveyors in our construction industry, because this is where I come from. Uh, maybe on, in other areas, it can involve other professionals such as accountants and so on. They are all uh, people that we have to work with. Um, and then uh, to identify and formulate uh, and solve open-ended and complex engineering problems, to describe and practice as a professional engineer in compliance with the uh, managerial, social, professional, and ethical responsibility. And then to communicate effectively by means of drawing, oral, written presentation, and so on. And then the, the ability to uh, impact, uh, to describe the impact of um, engineering related solutions in a global and societal context, especially the importance of health, safety, and environment consideration to both workers and the general public. And then the final four uh, attributes, which are also crucial, is to recognize the needs for and to engage in lifelong learning and to understand legal framework of the relevant statutory requirements and to use the techniques, skills, and modern engineering tools necessary for engineering practice. And finally, uh, to be able to use the computer IT tools relevant to the discipline so that uh, the, uh, they, they should be uh, deployed efficiently. Now, those attributes are important uh, to our WPEC education, especially professional engineering training. And, uh, and those stakeholders who are 
closely related to the, this uh, area, this training, uh, are divided into a number of sectors, education, institutions, such as uh, universities, and also its students. Uh, it in also includes the teaching staff, faculty, as well as the administrative laboratory personnel, etc. Um, from the uh, government and authority side, uh, statutory body such as the uh, Hong Kong CAA VQ, uh, VTC, my, uh, my fellow uh, panelists, and other uh, important institutions who are under the uh, statutory uh, governance. And uh, of course, not to forget that we have professional uh, bodies such as Hong Kong Institute of Engineers, who I work very closely with, and other professional uh, bodies. And uh, in terms of ethic, uh, one very important element is uh, ICAC in Hong Kong. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, contribution from those government, government departments, which I cannot name everybody. Now, of course, when we train engineers and professionals, they are ready to be used by the industry and to be employed. And finally, what matters is how the career development can be uh, prosperous uh, for our graduates. And then finally, they become an uh, alumni and then come back and contribute to uh, the institution. Um, actually, uh, there are a number of um, points that we can uh, uh, see the contribution of those st stakeholders can give us. Uh, from education side, obviously, uh, I'm one of them. Uh, we try very, very hard to uh, nurture and develop talents, students, and so that they and create cap capable, applicable knowledge to support social and economic uh, advancement. Uh, to review and enhance our program so that our curriculum will meet the requirement and needs. Uh, to incorporate industrial training and assessment as well as internship opportunity so that the student will have all sort of opportunity to, uh, to mingle, to, uh, to learn from the industry before they leave the education institutions. Um, and to ensure adequate resources such as laboratory space as well as finance to ensure their, their support uh, for good quality teaching and learning. Now from government side, I think uh, they play a very important role to lead and promote and publicize the VPAC to all the stakeholders, work closely with the uh, industry and uh, education sector and training institutions to strengthen and expand VPAC articulation pathways, uh, advise the academic standards uh, of degree programs via various um, institutions uh, and then en encourage industry and other government departments to recognize this support uh, and support the uh, qualification framework. And then for the industry, uh, they, I hope they can recognize the qualification of VPET um, provide different platforms to uh, advertise, organize those related activities to attract uh, our youngsters, students to join this training and education and programs. And then uh, offer, very importantly, internship and placement to uh, both sub-degree or degree level or even higher level of trainings. And then for the employer, it's very simple. Uh, give our youngsters opportunities, give them the career development path so as to uh, give them further training, enhancement, and then encourage them, retain the, the talent uh, colleagues. And then finally, uh, for our graduates, they have to do only two things, I believe, very importantly. Put theory into practice. Uh, okay, utilize what they learned, demonstrate professional competence, and skills in their workplace, enhance their marketability, uh, such as lifelong learning, upgrade practical skills through continuous learning for their whole career path. 
So I think with this, I will stop here. Uh, thank you for your uh, patience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Yun. Um, uh, it's a very comprehensive explanation of what um, constitutes the quality of WePAC uh, using the example of engineering studies. Uh, I have one uh, perception problem for you, uh, Professor Yun. So you are coming from the university, right? So generally, um, a lot of students, they, um, they, uh, they welcome the university more than the other training providers, whether the, the training in the university uh, is for VPAC or uh, uh, an academic study. So generally, they said um, they, they probably have a very incorrect uh, perceptions on VPAC as being inferior to academic study in university. So the, um, what do you think we can do to correct these misconceptions so that we can um, promote more repacks to parents and the students? Uh, um, uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I think this uh, is a very uh, interesting uh, question and uh, you bring out a very uh, interesting misconceptual uh, point. In fact, there is no contradiction between uh, professional, vocational educations. In fact, they are complementary to each other. And, uh, and what I can advise to, to, the, uh, to all the stakeholders again, referring to uh, our government, our educational bodies, professional bodies, as well as industry and uh, and our students, graduates, alumni, is that uh, don't be so random minded in, the, in what do we mean by training and education. They have to accept the fact that there are multiple platforms, including university, other platforms that will provide uh, VPET uh, opportunities. Uh, of course, different sectors or different institutions may do slightly different things. For example, in university, I think the misconcept comes from the fact that universities try for research excellence, which in a way is good for the society and is also contributory. But then they should not uh, overwhelmingly uh, uh, disregard the fact that we are also providing engineering education training or professional education training. And therefore, I don't see that any contradiction. We should work together. Everybody pay a role. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor. I think this topic is probably too wide <laughs> for a discussion here. So that in the interest of time, let me move on to another speaker. Uh, Mr. Paul Poon. Uh, he's the Vice Chancellor of the China Light and Power Academy. Um, Paul, the floor yeah. is yours. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, in the next 10 minutes, I would like to uh, express my view on what constitutes a good quality VPAC using uh, CLP Power Academy as a real life example. Uh, CLP Power Academy was established about uh, three years ago and uh, we have uh, two main objectives. The first one is to increase the band strength of the industry, both quality and quantity. And the second one is to give the young people an alternate pathway to move upward, in other words, have a higher upward mobility. Provided a student can put in effort, his progression will be as fast as or as good as a normal grammar school, grammar school student or the normal university. That's our two objectives. Right, let's look at the program now that has been offered by uh, CLP Power Academy so far. So we start, the lowest is the certificate or diploma program, and all the way up to the dual master program. And they are all accredited at QF, from QF2 to QF6. And in addition, they have all got the industry qualification, like the registered electrical worker A or H, uh, like the uh, charter engineer qualification, as accredited by uh, HKIE, and all our programs are partnership between 
GLP Power Academy and uh, academic institution. Why we have to do that? I think if you step back, it's very simple. Usually, the academic institution will have very good quality assurance process, uh, teaching and learning process, etc. And we don't want to duplicate that. They are very good. But usually, they don't really have uh, industry knowledge. And that's where COP Power Academy can bring in. So we bring in the curriculum, which can meet the industry lead. We provide lecturers by our colleagues. Basically, they teach what they are doing every day. So it must be relevant. relevant. We provide a capstone project, particularly for the degree student. And we also provide industry supervisor for this project. And we also provide the students have this uh, industry experience. And all these are really complementing what is lacking by the Lombok Grammar School or Grammar University. And that's why in the past three years or so, we have been very successful. Just can give an example. Uh, we already have uh, 500 students. And this year, we are adding over 100 students to our program. And we are seeing the student articulating from one program to the other, and we also seen graduate students are getting promotion, uh, a better job in their own organization, etc. So this is a very clear illustration that this collaboration really works. And very importantly, we must tie in the VPAC with the career progression in the industry. That's really important. So this slide shows, again, using COP as an example. In fact, this is the same for many other organizations. So starting from the bottom, a diploma student, uh, usually he is just a Form 3 student, and he entered the diploma program, and two years later, he could join COP as a technician. And at the same time, he could enroll into the professional diploma program, which is one year, that will bring him to the technical officer job and senior te technical office job. If he want to further progress, then he can enroll into the degree program, either the electrical or mechanical engineering program, and that will bring him to an engineer status. And if he still have a higher motivation to move upward, he can join our deal master program, and he could be engineering manager or even the leader so we are giving the student a very visible, practical, and rewarding career pathway. A student is not joining one program, he's joining a career program. And the student can sort of uh, have a multiple in and multiple out uh, pathway. Say he has a family issue or something, he can stop sort of uh, for one year before going into the upper, another upper level program. So this is uh, very flexible. And if you look at the left-hand side, the number of years. So 10 and a half years, a Form 3 student can get to a dual master program. He can get two master degree from two most reputable universities, HKUST and Shaka University. So that's we provide a very clear picture to the student joining a program. The student is not studying a program at all. He's studying a full-life career program. And let's look at this uh, first-year graduation student, which was held uh, in January last year. And you can see uh, we have uh, support from uh, all the senior uh, leaders in the company and also from uh, our chief secretary. And you can see also we have students from uh, ethnic minority, a female student. So you can see we are really encompassing sort of every walk of life of student. And that's our objective, to give the young people an upward mobility pathway and so that he could progress his academic study together with his uh, career. Now let's watch a short video on what I have just said. Second Chance
喺中电学院，我揾到新嘅发展方向。我得到嘅专业知识，唔单止嚟自课本，更嚟自每个实习嘅机会。完文凭、专业文凭，我可以继续读学士及硕士课程，增加晋升机会。逐层上唔会停低，但时间由我掌握。未来，我睇到事业上有更多嘅出路，有无限可能。These are our real students, by the way. They are not actors. <laughs> and another area I think is very important is who are going to support our program, and we call it UIG. So we mentioned university have uh, many good attributes, and we got the government support. For example, they are granting the REW status, and they are providing a lot of financial support to the students, and also the industry, of course. Uh, I mentioned earlier, we have uh, the curriculum design and lecturers, and also on the project, and also on the uh, recruitment. So, you have this uh, full support from UIG, that will make the program successful. And another area that is, has to be successful is a collaboration with other industry. Recently, there are few other corporate academies set up, like uh, Tang Gas, Aviation, uh, HKPC, etc., MTR. And we think that we are not competing with each other, each other but we should sort of uh, complementing with each other. Say we sort of uh, work together and we form a corporate tech academy network, C10. And I was fortunate to be elected as the founding chairman. Uh, chairman. And the purpose of C10 is very simple. We collaborate rather than compete. So we sort of uh, have a benchmarking uh, among ourselves. We share best practices. We jointly promote program. Uh, this is very important because uh, although we are in different in industry, but we are all in VPAC. So why don't we sort of jointly promote our program? And uh, for example, we run a uh, uh, road to a bright professional future uh, seminar and road show and we attract over 500 people coming and of course we have the encouragement from all the academic uh, corporate academies and uh, earlier this year we also run a VPAC promotion competition uh, for the form 4 and form 5 students and again we have an uh, overwhelming uh, response from the uh, schools and they give us really good idea on how to promote WePack. And we have uh, adopted quite a few of these good ideas. So all this shows that we cannot work alone. We should collaborate. And everyone sort of uh, collaborate, work together. We can really give a higher, or better quality WePack to our uh, next generation. And that's all for my, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, uh, I can see that uh, the, the CLP training model is certainly very uh, impressive because it encompasses nearly every element of success for uh, VPAC development. Uh, uh, in the interest of time, uh, I would like to move on to the um, fifth uh, speaker, Carrie Leung. She is the uh, CEO of the Hong Kong IB, a professional body for the banking sector. Kerry, please. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, thanks for HKCA VQ for having me today. And uh, my warmest congratulations to HKCA VQ for your remarkable achievements of the past 30 years. Today is a very good opportunity for me to share the long journey of HKIB as an in industry professional body, my incorporating uh, qualifications framework to enhance 
banking as a profession, to make and nurture the banking talents for the industry. Okay. We are very grateful that on 1st uh, August 2020, HKIB is appointed by the Secretary of Education to become a professional qualifications assessment agency. In short, we call it uh, PQAA, to accredit nine professional qualifications for the banking industry. And uh, practitioners could make use of this common qualifications benchmark to enhance their professional competencies and also to obtain industry, re and industry and regulators' recognition at the same time. Actually, these common qualifications uh, help us to enhance the professional uh, competencies and also, there's something wrong with the PowerPoint. Does it show? Oh, yeah, it comes. Uh, the industry and the regulators' recognitions. So what were we before the appointment as PQAA? Actually, HKIB is the first not-for-profit uh, professional institute in Hong Kong to issue banking qualifications. Uh, actually, we have a lot of uh, different uh, key stakeholders. And our objectives is to uphold the, um, and further develop the treasury status as an international financial center. We are very well represented by senior management from banks, and also, we provide a lot of professional training and development opportunities for the industry. Uh, we also organize a lot of industry conferences and networking events. However, we found that our key stakeholders are doing the same as we do. So we, are getting, we were getting confused and also questioned about our role. Are we just one of the training providers? And can we de deliver more to serve the industry and help driving the industry development. We looked at this scene uh, deeply and widely, and we saw academic institutions, other professional bodies, who off also offer various high standard education and training programs to the industry. Like many of us, they have uh, difficulties in catching up with the industry about the fast pacing and ever evolving development. While regulators and also the industry petitioners, they need academic institutions to provide work-ready graduates. However, they also faced challenges on how to make sure the competencies of the practitioners were continuously improving to compete with other cities. A passive approach to manage the new talents also posed difficulties for them to manage people risk and to ensure a sustainable way to supply a competent workforce. So in terms of employer, with the rapid changes and the development of the banking industry, it is always difficult for them to find the right talent. In addition to the heightened regulations and compliance, they always looked for a systematic approach to help them to identify talent gap in order to facilitate their manpower planning and also the yearly budget train, uh, training budget for their banks. For the employees and young uh, talents, they may aspire to join the industry, but they also worry about lacking understanding of the market trend and lacking practical industry knowledge. They need a tool to help them to plan their career and to invest the time and money effectively to become the right talent for their future employer. The industry had a, different, had a lot of different voices, but all needing to a different directions. Therefore, we need a clear, transparent, and also a widely recognized mechanism that lead the industry to go up and go forward. The process is like handling a bunch of big data, but how to do it and who to do it. First step, we did an industry-wide consultation. And uh, we did a, a detailed review of our qualifications and our training programs in terms of the positioning of the, um, the qualifications, the structure, admission and requirement, 
mechanism for the industry uh, involvement and also the articulation uh, to other study paths. So with the introduction of the HKQF, we are able to use the QF as a common platform, a common language, and also its QA mechanism to solicit for, uh, support from the regulators and the industry. So we started the alignment by establishing a common qualifications benchmark under the Q Hong Kong QF for the banking industry. First, so along this journey with the assistance with the um, um, uh, Qualifications Framework uh, Secretariat, the HKCAVQ, HKIB um, expanded the role from a training operator to a professional writer, and now a professional qualifications assessment agencies. Uh, being a professional qualification um, writer, uh, we partnered with different types of banks together with EOC advisors to develop the SES for retail banking, uh, corporate and commercial banking, and also the private banking. Then, with the competency st uh, the standards, we gradually developed a total of 11 skilled-based and quality-assured learning programs, and also the professional qualifications. And subsequently, we also developed the vocational qualifications pathway, which is the VQP. And uh, these qualifications ban benchmark assist uh, to build a sustainable ways to manage people's risk for the regulators and industry pioneers. Uh, we're able to build a systematic ways to attract and develop talents for employers. And we also uh, able to build a transparent ways to increase autonomy to develop career plans for employees and young talents. And finally, to complement ways to beef up industry knowledge and expand partnership with tertiary education providers. So uh, I have just explained that this lie as a role. So in terms of the outcome, this is the sample output of our QF journey, the SES and also the vocational uh, qualifications pathway. And uh, you may go to the Hong Kong QF website for more details. So I'm not going to explain here. Uh, and also, maybe I'm pressing too hard. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's quite sensitive. It doesn't, oh. Sorry about that. Stop, okay. <laughs> So in terms of the application of the UOCs in uh, VPAC qualifications, we may go to, you may go to the HKIB website for more information about the nine accredited and regulator recognized skill-based uh, professional qualifications. So these information are all listed in our website. Um, last but not the least, I would like to use this as an example to um, give a um, uh, uh, a recent example uh, to uh, how we establish a closer, closer link between the v VPAC and the employment for the 2020 fresh graduates. Uh, you may all know that uh, recently, because of the, uh, the COVID and the US trade war, um, the fresh graduate of this year uh, are facing a lot of challenges in finding a job. Uh, Hong Kong MA actually partnering with the Hong Kong Association of Banks Academy of Finance and also 43 banks and also 11 uh, universities. They launched a banking talent program for nurturing fresh graduates by providing a six month uh, working experience and also sponsoring of a um, industry knowledge training and also five occupation based professional qualification pitched at QF level four. So if you look at the, um, the uh, PowerPoint, I've listed out the, the uh, qualifications. These uh, qualifications are also tailored to, um, uh, to fresh graduate. Uh, they could choose uh, to study respective professional qualifications in according to the banking functions they are about to join. Uh, we all hope that this program could help them to strengthen their future employability. Okay, 
So finally, uh, to conclude, uh, we all think that it is a collective effort of employer, employees, academic institutions, regulators, and also the government to enhance banking as a profession in order to attract, nurture, develop, mobilize our talent, and also to help our talents to excel in order to sustain Hong Kong as an international financial center. So thank you for listening to my presentation. Back to you, Anthony. Thank you, Kerry. I think Hong Kong IB certainly uh, set a very good example on how they leverage on the platform of Hong Kong QF to provide high quality uh, professional trainings and enhance the banking uh, uh, sector as a profession. Uh, I'm sorry we don't have time to ask more questions on Kerry's uh, presentation. And I have to invite the last speaker of our panel, Professor uh, James uh, Kalaya. Uh, Professor uh, James Kalaya is the uh, principal and the CEO of Malta College of Art, Science and Technology. And he is also the president for the European Forum for uh, VET. Uh, Professor Kalaya, please. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to, um, to address you during this very important seminar. Quality is a word like pandemic. It means the same all over the world. And I think talking about quality in an age where quality is a demand from industry is of huge concern and importance to education. So I think this is very appropriate and apposite to talk about quality of VPEDs. Of course, there are many perspectives. As you can see from the next slide, at the European perspective, we associate cities with decisions that politicians, or rather ministers for education take when talking about key issues in education and training. The Copenhagen process was an important development in 2002 to bring vocational education and training on an equal platform with university education. Although some countries in Europe gave importance to education and training, it required a new, a new focus, which then through many years leading to Riga, confirmed how important quality in vocational education is all about. In Riga, quality was one of the four key deliverables that all European states had to deliver by 2020. Are we there? Well, if you look at the next slide, why is quality important? I think the previous speakers gave a very important interesting overview of how Hong Kong looks at quality as being the hallmark of the whole society. The emphasis on quality is because the workplace is profiled as high in technology and work practices are centered around the importance of quality as improving, of course, the output and the productivity and the services to the community. This has been seen in Europe, as can be seen in the next slide, through an acronym which we normally refer to when we talk about quality or European quality assurance, vocation, education and training. This is ECAVET. We have many of these acronyms at European level, as you have in Hong Kong. And the purpose of having this important network was precisely to ensure that all European states, and in particular, where vocational training takes place in colleges and schools, follow precise guidelines so that the delivery of education equals the high delivery in industry. So the aim 
of the ECOVET work program, as can be seen in the next slide, focuses on four important directions. The first, because we live in a continent with so many different languages, 500 million in population, we thought that exchanging information and experiences is extremely important. Why? Because not all European states have the same quality assurance in terms of vocational education training. Some have it high in importance, some have it at a lower rate. So exchanging information leads to the second important deliverable, which is policy development. And I can freely say that practically all member states of the European Union today and beyond have very precise policy developments in the area of quality assurance and bets. Of course, there is a major difference between having policy and implementing policy. I think the bridge between the two is what many of you during this panel discussion have explored and have explained how you put theory into practice, policy into practice. And therefore, the third uh, deliverable is collaboration. And there are hundreds of projects across many European institutions to promote quality assurance. We learn from each other, from each other's good practice and from each other's mistakes. But finally, you need that people do not only follow quality assurance because there is a policy, because you have to do it, but because it is a culture. It is something which you do automatically, like gastronomy, like any other aspects of culture, quality improvement should become something which we do almost naturally. So ECOVET, as can be seen from the next slide, is the response to quality of vets. And there are a set of European requirements, expectations to promote and support the continuous. It's a lifelong learning almost um, aspect of quality in vocation education and training. And there are reference tools, of course. It's a framework which, because of our diversity, we ascribe to it and we come as close as possible to what is required in order to ascertain quality in the teaching and in the learning of vocational education training. The next slide illustrates that quality assurance has an improvement cycle. You cannot review unless you plan, and you cannot implement unless you plan. You cannot evaluate unless you implement. These are the four overarching principles that all member states of the European Union have subscribed within the ECOVET quality assurance and quality improvement cycle. You need to plan, you need to implement, you need to evaluate, you need to review, and you need to do it again. Because industry changes, because sectors change, because knowledge improves, knowledge changes. How to deliver requires planning, implementation, evaluation, and review as a cycle. The next slide illustrates how important it is to monitor. Monitoring refers to the combination of internal external evaluations. And we have methods of going into one place and another, different European states, of course, to look at different systems, evaluate others, and have others evaluating us. And the, the next slide illustrates the measurement tools. And here, a measurement tool for us means giving, for example, something which you also mentioned, a voice to students in quality assurance, in having very clear procedures that people can follow that principals like myself in a, in a, in a huge college of 12,000 students by our standards, it's huge. There are strict procedures, but then you have to have adequate resources. You cannot expect to have quality in VET 
without having the financial and the human resources available. And finally, the last point is that you have to have a, a, a governing process of quality assurance. There have to be layers of checks and balances. The next slide illustrates why all of these processes are important, because we have very fierce competition in education from industry. We are partners, we work together, but industry has an upper hand when it comes to quality. Needless to mention that when it comes to industry, they are, to my way of thinking, champions in quality assurance. If you look at some sectors like aviation, like the pharmaceuticals, like maritime affairs, like food chains, we as educators can learn a lot from how quality is part and parcel of how industry operates. And therefore, my last two slides illustrate that quality in vets gives a higher esteem to vocational education and training. And in addition to that, because of the higher esteem, people will gain qualifications which are much more recognized in industry. Hence, they can get better salaries and better conditions of work. So the quality of vets is seen through a European perspective, and in my country in particular, as being the next step for a better salary and conditions of work. Why? Because your qualification carries more weight with industry. It carries more expertise. It carries more direct hands-on experience in industry. And therefore, working and learning have become one and the same. And finally, my last slide, Quality in VET is the platform for a better quality of life to all skilled workers and their families. I think this is the major ma message that we as educators need to keep in our minds when we improve VET. We're not improving VET simply to compete with industry. We're not uh, improving the quality in VET simply to have our college high in the rank of colleges among European states. No, we want a better quality of VET because we want for people a better quality of life. The speaker before me mentioned, I think, a very important aspect of attracting and nurturing and developing and mobilizing talents and excelling in talents. It is all about this. People have talents. They have to be given the right platform where they can develop this, the talents that they possess. Everyone has talents. It is the platform that determines whether these talents will be developed in the right direction or not. And I think schools and colleges and universities of applied science have the right platforms to do it but it all depends on the quality of vocational education and training. It depends how we resource quality in vocational education and training, how seriously we take it, how much we review it, and to a larger extent, how much we link quality in VET to the better quality of life of all skilled workers. I tried to capture in these few slides an idea of how colleges and um, universities of applied sciences and schools of VET are functioning today at a, a wider European perspective. As I said earlier, some are cruising and some are flying at a lower, at a lower height in terms of quality. But the aspiration is there. We cannot aspire to have serious VET unless we have the right quality in VET. Thank you for listening. And again, it is a pleasure to address you. A pity to sit in my office and pretend that I am in Hong Kong. Thank you, James. Uh, thank you for your presentation and introducing this EcoVet framework and how it works to uh, promote uh, quality improvement for VETs.
I'm sure there are many questions on that, but uh, because we don't have time uh, for these sessions anymore, so the, I have to wait until you come to Hong Kong next time. We can have a more detailed discussions on, on this topic. Now, uh, well, uh, I think we have come to the end of our panel sessions. Let me um, say a few words as a conclusion of these sections. Now, we have been talking about VPAC. We know how important it is. Not only is it uh, important to build a competent workforce for a society to support economic development, but at the same time, VPAC is very important because it creates opportunities of employment for our youngsters and also their advancement in the social ladders. Now, our speakers, um, are quite clear that in their speech that good quality VPAC are not attributable to the efforts of one single party, but rather all of us, all stakeholders working together. Um, luckily, our uh, speakers here suggest that there are a number of platforms, this collaborative platform, allowing everybody to work together to improve uh, VPAC. Uh, like the Hong Kong QF, the university sectors, professional bodies like the Hong Kong IB, and also the network CTAN, QA agency, and also overseas, the Equivet at the international levels. So I have to thank the Hong Kong CAVQ for providing this platform, for sharing, and uh, look forward to the next opportunity to discuss more on this uh, topic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chen and our distinguished panelists.